Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm always, always happy to connect with you guys. If this is your first time on my channel, you're highly, highly welcome. So like, subscribe, and leave your comment below. So I have a wonderful and amazing person here, and he goes by the name. Obu Godfrey Luce. Oh, thanks for coming, Daria. You're welcome. Having you. So I'm a Muslim, and he's a Christian. So I just call him to like come check out some Muslim videos with me on my channel, so that like, you see our own side of our religion and learn stuff. Cause like he's open-minded and all of that. Yeah. So today we're checking out another video where the title is from the glamorous lifestyle of Hollywood to Islam. Mm. Oh. Interesting one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she's a revert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's just dive into it. This story, like every other revert story, is unique and demonstrates many things Allah has promised us. Indeed, none of his promises will go unfulfilled. This video tells the revert story of former Hollywood rising star, Jamie Brown, who left all the glamorous and equally high-paying Hollywood lifestyle to revert to Islam. What happened? How did it happen? Stick around as we bring you the details. Who is Jamie Brown? Jamie Brown was born and raised in a Catholic family in Kenosha, Wisconsin, in the US. As a devout Catholic family, attending Mass every week is compulsory, and this Jamie did without question in her early years. As she grew up and got to the age where she could analyse things rather than just obey orders, she started questioning her religion and the religious movement her family had participated in for generations. She would ride her bike to the library to read books about religions, Christian denominations, etc. She never came across any book about Islam during this time. The quest to get answers led her to attend Mormon seminary with her best friend every morning before school. For those who have no idea what the Mormon church is, it is a Christian-like movement that believes in the crucifixion of Jesus, the Trinity as separate entities, and that more prophets came after Jesus. They use the Mormon Bible, which they believe is the unaltered Word of God, alongside the Christian Bible. Jamie's quest for answers didn't stop there. At one point, she used to sleep over at another best friend's house on Saturdays, so she could attend the Methodist Movement Church with the family on Sundays, where she got baptised. Although she didn't get the right answers she dearly needed, she remained a Christian until adulthood attending a non-denominational church. This is a case of stick with what you have if you don't get a better alternative. The journey to Hollywood. Jamie, being an art enthusiast, moved to Hollywood in California after graduating from college to work as a stylist to Hollywood celebrities. During this time, she was paying attention and learning about production. In no time, she became outstanding in the process and started working as a production staff in movies, TV series and music videos. Eventually, Jamie went on to work on the set of many motion pictures. She was on a fast trajectory, already living in Beverly Hills and driving a Jaguar at the time. There seemed to be no stopping to the Hollywood lifestyle and the probability of attaining the peak of Hollywood career. Many times we make plans, we work hard for the things we think we want, without factoring destiny, the divine direction, which is the most important pen that maps out our lives. While working on the set of an HBO television series, Jamie observed that a particular colleague would leave every Friday afternoon for Jummah prayer. It was later she found out the colleague was a Muslim. Naturally, the Christian instinct kicked in. She invited him to her church. She found it unexpected when he turned down the invitation, primarily because most people don't turn down church invitations. Despite underplaying the invitation, she was surprised the colleague was adamant. The experience she had with him piqued her interest to know why exactly this guy was so engrossed in his religion that he refused an invitation to her church from her. The Journey to Islam 
Prior to this time, her only exposure to Islam was the usual negativity spread on TVs and other media outlets. She was curious to know what exactly is Islam all about. Then she asked her colleague to lend her his book, the Holy Quran, with the intention to find loopholes she could use to discredit the religion to the friend. So she started reading. Reading the first few pages, she was surprised the Quran was similar in content to the Bible. So she became more interested. She became so engrossed with the Quran that she read it everywhere. She was constantly wandering around, finding herself in different places with the Quran in her hand and just a backpack with her. Each time she read the Quran, she felt a subtle voice was telling her to revert to Islam. Eventually, the voice became very consistent and louder. At this point, she figured she had to move to leave the Hollywood lifestyle behind, to follow this new path she was being directed to go. Then it happened. One day in 2010, Jamie, in her mid-twenties at the time, woke up, packed a suitcase and made an unannounced hijrah to Morocco. She was asked by many people what convinced her to make the trip from a developed country with a good life to a developing country that has no assurance for her. She had no answers to their questions, but she knew she needed to move out of Hollywood to a Muslim country where she would be in the proper gathering. She knew many of her friends and acquaintances wouldn't understand the rationale behind her decision. So, to save herself the stress of debating what she had already decided on, she left without informing anyone. Taking the Shahada in Morocco Shortly after Jamie arrived in Morocco, she was filled with the urge to set the ball rolling, but was held back by the need to finish reading the Quran. According to her, to avoid surprises that might affect her faith, she didn't want to read some things she would disagree with later. Immediately after she finished reading the Quran, she took the Shahada in Morocco. She lived in Morocco for five years before she moved back to the US. Life after becoming a Muslim Jamie's five years in Morocco weren't all rosy. Some of the many problems she encountered during her early days were accommodation and the language barrier. She learned Moroccan Arabic by immersion, writing down new words she learned every day. Though her background in styling, she started giving haircuts and doing graphics design to generate income. In 2015, Jamie moved back to the United States, establishing her base in her hometown in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Jamie continued as a graphics designer and also took up painting, a skill she could not use while in Morocco due to the scarcity and cost of painting materials. While surfing only one day, she came across world-renowned calligraphy and light artist Karim Jabari, whom she exchanged a few messages with and ended up becoming his virtual manager when she found out his manager had just resigned to raise a family. Gradually, she developed an interest in mural painting and did some projects with Jabari. Within a short time, Jamie herself became an internationally acclaimed mural artist, traveling across the globe to do murals. Jamie enjoys unspoken da'wah and has displaced this through her works. She is an avid advocate of hijab rights. May Allah continue to guide her and keep her steadfast in her faith. Thank you brothers and sisters for watching this video, I hope you liked it, make sure to like, subscribe and support us on Patreon, the link is in the description below. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wrong. It's, it's amazing, well like I, I want to my believers, me being a Christian, I don't have issues, it's what you believe in. Um, if someone tell me, like most of my friends or people, like I'm very open-minded, most people are like, are you really sure you really be really a Christian? I was like, I'm like, yeah, 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 why not? I do, it's your belief, yeah. right? It's what you, you're convinced.
-hmm. I don't need to come we get into an argument because I want you, I want to force down my belief on you. Yeah. Probably if I've, I was born into a Muslim family, mm -hmm. I, I would have that same belief like the Muslim, you understand? Mm -hmm. This I, I grew up with this, I grew up in the society where most people are Christians. People have associated almost all my life are Christians. I'm always in the church. I was born in the church. I grew up serving in the church. Okay. <laughs> so for me to be convinced, it would take more work yeah. than some other person. You get my point. Mm -hmm. And it's about searching, reading. You see, according to her, she searched. She looked, she read the Quran from cover to cover yeah. before she made her decision, decision. Yeah. so that is what i said for you to if anything is bugging you it's for you to go out there and search you can never find gold without searching you have to seek you have to look yeah. for you to see if you sit down and you won't get to where you just keep swallowing everything people will just send down to you yeah. you, you get my point the same way when you see people they say oh i'm a muslim i have converted to christianity because they search not because I came to tell you, even if I come to tell you, yo, bah, look at this, look at this, in, in, it's in the Bible, go and check. Yeah. If I tell you, oh, um, Christianity and Jesus is the only um, true Jesus you get to heaven. If you don't go and read, if you only take my word for it, mm -hmm. your faith might not last because you're not grounded. Yeah. Okay. You, you get my point. Mm -hmm. So yes, definitely, it's not an easy thing, you know, trying to unlearn how, everything you've learned over the years yeah. to pick up something new. It takes a decision. You might, a lot of consideration has been put into it. The, what I always take out for most of these things, like the Quran, like the Bible always say, read. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. So when you read, you're going to seek that thing you, um, you're, you're searching, searching for. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's Especially right. even some people used to say this thing, this, uh, um, for Africans, if you want to hide some things from us Africans, hide it in a book, put it yeah. in a book, we will never read it. Oh yeah, that one, mostly, yeah. Yeah, like we that, yeah. just hear, yeah, see, this person said, and that, and this prophet said, and this person said, this prophet said, for me, always a third party. Yeah. Not from the source, not you searching, not you finding out. Okay. Yeah. If you go, like even when most people, the Catholics, they came down to Africa, or the early Christians, they came down to Africa, we couldn't read. They didn't, even when they taught us how to read, we were not even reading. We were taking for what the priest says, what the pastor said. Okay. But if we search, most of the things, in front of us, sometimes we start looking at it and look at some people or what some lecturers taught us, there are errors in this. But when you go back and you're like, ah, but what this man said and what is here, it's two different things. Because yeah. probably he might have understood it in a different way and you reading it, you're getting a different understanding. Or yours might even be more correct than him because we are humans and we err. Yeah. So in what I'm taking out from this is read. Yeah. That's really true. I love I love when you talked about reading, research, all of that. Like based on our religion, it's like you don't see anything concerning the religion without giving a proof. If I tell you this is black, this is black, I need to like prove to you like this comes from this person, from yeah. this person to tune. Like you need to show me proof. Yeah. So our religion is like that. It's everything based on fact. Like you open and read it. Okay. So it's all of that. Like you need to research a whole lot. You just don't take it. True. And yeah, because like, yeah, because the prophet, like, during his days, uh, may peace be upon him, during his days, like, he teaches people how to, like, go about doing everything. Like, Quran, Islam talks about everything, talking about marriage, how to do marriage, talking about um, business, everything. So you see, nothing in this life that the Quran didn't talk about, that God didn't tell the prophet to, like, do and stop. So all the things are there. So you just need to read, research, and learn, okay? And just pray that God guides you. Because, yeah. like, sometimes we, we people learn stuff to, like, discriminate. You know, it's based on your intention. Yeah. Some people learn to, like, find fault in some things. Some people learn to, like, understand what they are learning, okay? Sure. So you just have to be open-minded, read, and understand things, and just... That God lead us through. That's the only thing. We just pray that we all make it happen. Exactly. Right. There's something I, I always say. Most people, I, I even speak to my brothers and sisters. Once you are pushing something, no matter what you feel, you know, I don't blame some people. Some people, because of what's happening, especially in my country, Nigeria, mm -hmm. where there are a lot of extremists in the north, the north is more occupied by people who practice Islam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they have this 
notion that because of the aggressive because people don't really understand the what they taught them it's not actually the yeah. like violence is not part of yes the exactly what's the been taught they carry it to the extreme when yeah. they go extreme because most people like oh islam yes people they associate them with terrorism and stuff and when they go to search and read these things they don't go with an open mind with a clear head they are going to find fault with that thing that is where i don't have if you're going there and you just to look for um you wouldn't be able to read everything. You're just reading through just to look for where there's a fault. You're not yeah. reading to understand, to assimilate. Yeah, that's you get my point. Mm -hmm. So that is something I say. If you're going to find whatever you're reading, be it the Bible, be it the Quran, be it your lecture notes, read to get an understanding. Only when you get, have an understanding, you're able to discern. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You have, you'll be able to disseminate. Because like, most of the things that are going across, like Islam, people kill and all that, that's just the media. Because like, in the Quran, it's stated there clearly. When you save one soul, you save the, save the whole of humanity. When you kill one soul, you kill the whole of humanity. So that tells you, like, it's not about killing. That you, That's not you. That's not the religion. We don't do that thing. It's just that people, like, do those things, yeah. And because, like, in the, in the religion, like, all I have to say, like, if you go to war during the time of the prophets, you don't cut down trees, you don't fight who doesn't fight, you don't fight an old person, you don't hold someone as captive, you don't force religion on a person. So all those things, there are rules you follow. But nowadays, like, you, you see people going there, like killing innocent. That's not Islam, right? No, you don't do those things. So, but thanks, I really appreciate having you here. You're I welcome. love the tour and all of that. So that's really good. Thanks for coming. So guys, we've come to the end of this reaction. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and leave your comment below. Stay blessed.